Happy Sunday, everybody. Thanks for tuning back in. I am Mike. This is my Sunday morning every week, Clearing the Bases episode, where I go through all of my bookmarks and open tabs and things, things that I found interesting in the sports card and, and collectibles universe in the past week that didn't quite rise to the level of their own video. Uh, I am, I love this series. I hope you guys do too. This isn't going to be nearly as long as last week's, I don't think which is good for me since I'm hungry. Uh, let's get started here. I'm gonna share my screen. First of all, Clearing the Bases is sponsored by Just Collect. Just Collect, led by Leighton Sheldon, is one of the top buyers of vintage cards and collections in the country. You can fill out their free appraisal form by clicking here on their website. Link is in the description of this video at justcollect.com or you can email Leighton directly at Leighton at JustCollect.com for an offer. Remember, go to the link in the description if you're interested. All right, here we go. We're gonna jump right in here. This was the biggest news of the week. Actually, there were a couple different things kind of similar to this. Well, the, the whole cleaning thing, uh, the, these guys, I don't remember who they are. Somebody went to PSA, dropped off a Wemby, one of one, Victor Wembanyama, one, one of one, Prism, Black, something or other. And when it came out as a 10, they were celebrating and crying and cheering and stuff. And they thanked Kurt's card care. Um, so they're alleging that they cleaned the card. There's no evidence that they did. So this was huge news all week long. And there's all kinds of videos about it. I didn't want to cover it in, in its own video. Um, so there were a lot of people saying, whoa, cleaning cards is wrong. I can't believe PSA allowed this. And it went on for what seemed like days before PSA finally spoke. Uh, and Ryan Hodge, Hodge, I don't know, the president of PSA uh, came out and did speak about it. And first of all, he showed off not only the black one of one PSA 10, but they also graded the black shimmer first off the line one of one, graded it at nine. And he said, PSA stands by the original assessment and our graders did not detect anything with the surface to deem it was altered. That said, PSA does not approve of any chemicals or foreign substances being added to the surface of a card to improve the condition or appearance. If we detect that this has happened to any card, we will consider it altered. And so the, the real question is, were those guys, I already closed the tab, who were bragging about, or, or not bragging, but thanking Kurt's card care. Were they just doing that for fun? Were they paid to do that? Or did they actually use Kurt's card care? And and what I think is being said here by PSA is that they can't detect the the substances. They didn't come out and say, we have detected these many times before. We just didn't on these cards. We we have a strong procedure in place to detect these substances how would they detect them is there some sort of something they're putting on the card are they licking the card <laughs> i i don't know but it seems to me that they are not able to detect to, to detect them and i'm curious what your thoughts are uh are is there is it first of all do you think it's bad to to clean a card is it altering adding some sort of foreign substance to a card or, or a chemical. And do you think PSA can detect it? I'm not so sure about that. And Neo took this card. Last week I showed the card and it looked way off centered. And now I'm not so sure. This, this picture is better than the scan that they had originally. And it's not perfect centering, but it seems to be way better than it looked last week. So, I don't know. It's interesting. Neo's take on card cleaning is, card cleaning is when the grader doesn't catch it. Card altering is when they do catch it. Which seems like a good uh, definition for each of these. <laughs> You've cleaned the card if the grader doesn't catch it. You have altered it when they do. PSA knows altering when they see it. 
they don't know cleaning because they don't see it, I guess. All right, here's another big, uh, there are three big stories this week. This is another one. This is a Wyatt Langford super fractor, one of one. Uh, the seller agreed to sell it during the redemption process. Wyatt Langford then has a massive spring. I mean, just a beast of a spring training. The seller receives the card and sells to a new buyer during the, uh, for double the original agreed upon offer. So this is the this simply high-end cards, the person, I guess, that originally bought it for $25,000. They had an agreement. It was, it was a, a redemption. They had an agreement for $25,000. And then the seller reached out to them and said they had a matching $25,000 offer and said, will you, will you pay me 27 for it? Which, uh, okay, they, they accepted. I don't know why they would need to increase their offer when it matches a second offer, but uh, they, the, the puller's father had just passed away and they felt like pulling the card from literally one pack was his doing from up above. It was a heartwarming story. And they said they could use the money and he was extremely happy to oblige. And I'm, I'm using he because 90 something percent of collectors here are, are he. So uh, they, I don't know, we don't know what they're, who it is, but I've never purchased a card this large in dollar amount and don't typically have money like this laying around. So I bought a table at the Bur Burbank card show and liquidated some of my favorite higher end pieces and grinded on eBay to finally come up with the cash to make the deal. So they are now, because they have this deal for $27,000, liquidating their favorite high end pieces from their collection to come up with the $27,000. The card was a redemption. And we were unsure of when the card would be in hand, but for weeks and weeks, both men assured me the card was mine and that they were both men of faith and honor and thought it would be a shame on the father's grave for them to accept a different offer and backstab me. Over the, I don't know if this is the seller's words or the buyer's words. Over the next few weeks, they continued to ask me if I was still buying the card and they were nervous I was going to back out, but I assured them I was going to, gather, going to buy it. Gathering the money took a lot of effort and liquidation, so I was 100% bought in. Uh, they send me a pick of the card in hand to brag. So here's this. They sent the card. Here it is. And he says, no way. I'll start looking at flights because they have the card. He's ready to fly to pick it up. And he says, hey, man, this is the seller. Been a long couple days. We received an offer for this card at $50,000 cash, and we took it. That's life-changing money and impossible for us to say no to. We appreciate you reaching out and having interest, but we have decided to accept a different offer. And I'm curious for your thoughts on this. It's uh, such a such a difficult situation. There's a deal supposedly in writing um, for the for the card, not the redemption, because it was during the redemption process. The card came in and the seller got a bigger offer because Wyatt Langford had a monster spring or is having a monster spring and they sold it. And I get selling it for, for wanting to sell it. I get wanting to sell it for twice what you agreed to, but how do you, I don't know if this is the dealer or the family, if it's the dealer, um, how do you how do you show your face in business again? How will people trust you? And that's the challenge for me is I I don't whoops, I don't think it's the dealer. I think it's the family. And so I don't know. It's uh, it's a strange situation. I'm curious for your thoughts. It's unfortunate for simply high end cards. They liquidated their favorite high-end items to be able to buy something that they had an agreement on. Oof. And then this somebody posted this, which I thought was funny. Zero minutes since last hobby drama. Yeah. I thought this was cool as a huge Seinfeld fan. Assistant to the traveling secretary bobblehead doll, George Costanza. 
So they, MLB says the Yankees are hosting Seinfeld night on July 5th and giving away this George Costanza bobblehead. And so I went and sure enough, July 5th is a Red Sox game at Yankee stadium and Yankee stadium is only a five and a half hour drive from my house, five hour drive. So I might, uh, might be getting some tickets and getting a Seinfeld bobblehead doll. This is a weird one that I'm not 100% sure I understand. Mario Alejandro, again, who's great on Twitter. And by the way, Twitter in the past week or so has been very strange. Like, I'll log in some days and I'll have zero sports card posts. I follow only sports card people. I don't ever interact with anything but sports cards. So there's no... Uh, the, the the algorithm knows what you like because based on what you like or whatever. I don't know. Uh, I follow nobody outside of sports cards, I follow, I interact with nothing outside of sports cards or collectibles. And some days I'll log in and it's all sports cards, which is what I like. And some days I'll log in and my For You page is just clickbaity, nothing to do with collectibles. So I, I didn't do a lot on Twitter this week because it's just a challenge. But Mario Alejandro, uh, I remember this originally happening last summer or fall, whenever Top's Cosmic Chrome came out. The planetary pursuit Uranus parallels were had stated odds at one in every twenty thousand packs. The Venus one every seven hundred and twenty-one. Uh, but I think it, what was originally the theory was that these were reversed because the Venus never appeared. Nobody ever saw any Venus, but the Uranus did come out. Uh, so I think that these odds were just reversed. But then all of a sudden this week two Venus cards appeared, Mike Trout and Ronald Acuna Jr. out of nowhere by the same seller on eBay. So uh, I don't know that anybody, yeah, so not a single Venus parallel had ever surfaced and they both surfaced on eBay from the same seller. These are pretty cool looking cards, by the way. And as far as I can tell, there is no statement from Tops or Fanatics on this. So I'll be keeping my eye on this. By the way, sign up for my newsletter. Link is also in description because I provide a lot of updates to this type of thing in my newsletter. And I'll have a new newsletter tomorrow morning, Monday morning. This is a weird one. Tops is creating baseball cards made from gum. Julio Rodriguez. And I guess it's a number to five Julio Rodriguez card made out of gum. And they released a video showing how they do it too. It's cool. It's just one of those new gimmicky things. It comes with a neat little slab. Makes you wonder if Topps is going to be slabbing more cards. Okay, another Mario Alejandro. This is a Topps Luminaries Warren Sp autograph. Warren Spawn. And we talk about this a lot, just how they cut off these autographs. It's unfortunate. I, I don't... I don't know why they buy such big autographs to put in cards. If it doesn't fit in a card, it shouldn't be in a card, in my opinion. I don't want a Warren Sp autograph. This is awesome. Tony Mont <laughs> Scarface. Say hello to my little identification. This is a green card. Uh, yeah, I just thought this was cool. Sold for $24,000. Scarface ID. I haven't watched this movie in too long. Definitely going to have to watch this soon. Uh, this person is alleging that PSA has bots defending it. These two people, Melba Chisholm, with a lot of numbers after, and Mallory Triplett, with a lot of numbers. These are supposedly easy ways to determine if it's a bot, is if there are a lot of numbers after the the name both tweeting within seconds of each other virtually the same thing i've had a few cards that i thought were perfect that came back with a lower grade 
I've also had a few cards that I thought were imperfect that came back with a higher grade. It's just the way it goes sometimes. And then the difference here is just that last sentence. It's all subjective is what this Mallory triplet person says. And it does seem like they have bots. They, they have paid bots to defend them, which is, it seems that way. I don't know for sure, but these are just way too similar to me. Next to each other, within seconds of each other, on posts where people are criticizing. Um, yeah, like it's it's on this where you're talking about PSA 10. Interesting. What do you guys think? Here's a, another really weird controversial thing. This is Jeff Wilson of Cards HQ and Sports Card Investor. He this Cards Jakes had a client uh, had a client who has a big card, a six figure card. Jeff agreed to allegedly agreed to pay $100,000. He said, I would pay $100,000 cash for it, but that would be my max offer. And this guy says, no, I'd want to do straight. You know, Jeff, he offers him a trade. Jeff says, I want to do a straight cash deal. But with $100,000, he can buy those cards. And this guy says, hey, Jeff, it's a done deal. Congrats on the pickup. My client's name, blah, blah, blah. Jeff says, that's awesome. Thank you. Gosh, Vancouver is a long way away. I wish he was closer. I don't know anyone up there to pick it up. I wonder if he's traveling anywhere in Canada or the U.S. anytime soon where it would be exchanged. I can call him to discuss tomorrow or next week. Uh, he, so then Cards Jakes also says, he said he'd like 24 to 48 hours to think it over, but I think he'll take it. Oh, no, I'm sorry. This is part of the old one. So Jeff says, I don't think that's very fair. I did make an offer, but never spoke directly to the seller who you later told me was 4,000 miles away and wanted me to pick up the card in person. Soon after I got the seller's contact info, I let them know I wasn't going to move forward with the cash offer. Oh yeah, I completely forgot to show you. Uh, he did, Jeff ended up uh, messaging the seller directly saying that they, he needs to back out because something surfaced at one of my businesses a couple of days ago that I'm going to need to put the cash towards. So Jeff did seem to, I mean, there's some wiggle room here, did seem to back out of a $100,000 offer. Uh, he says, I let them know I wasn't going to move forward with the cash offer after all due to a larger than expected tax bill due March 15th, but would look for other means to get the deal done. In another tweet, Jeff says that it was a corporate tax bill uh, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I can. I, I never. <laughs> I'm not a fan of defending Jeff Wilson, and I'm, I'm not really going to here. But I think that there's enough wiggle room here. He said I would pay a hundred thousand dollars for it, uh, and then when he says Jeff, it's a done deal. Jeff says that's awesome. Thank you, which sounds to me like Jeff's agreed to it again here. Um, and then he backs out. So we've got another deal backing out of, but if, and then Jeff says, I didn't know he was 4,000 miles away in a different country. That's kind of, that's on you, Jeff. I don't know. What do you guys think? Put it in comments. And the card that Jeff was going to, buy for $100,000, allegedly, uh, th which is this, from what I'm being told, this Shohei rookie 1952 Tops autographs, super fractor, 9.5 with a 10 auto in a Beckett, sl Beckett slab, was originally a nine. And somehow, somehow, Beckett it was resubmitted to Beckett and they got a 9.5. And what are the difference, differences here? You got centering nine, corners 9.5, edges 10. 
so it was edges 9.5 and edges got bumped up to 10 and surface here is 8.5 here it's 9.5 so kurt's card care clean this up i don't know it's pretty wild all right back to fun stuff Andy, Andy Dufresne's letter to Red in Shawshank Redemption sold for $37,500 at PropStore.com. Look at that. It's folded differently, interestingly. But really cool. My all-time favorite movie. Another Neo Cards and Comics thing, somebody, he's he sports cards and nonsense, which is an absolute train wreck of a uh, Facebook group. This guy says he had $30,000 invested in rookie Mac Jones PSA 10s and ungraded autos. Oof. This Jaguars trade feels like a death sentence for Mac and the value of my cards. Ouch. Somebody says, look at the bright side. It's not Wander Franco. Yeah, I guess. $30,000 in one person, one player who has only been in the league for a few years. What a risk. That is such a risk. Jeff's response to that is, sure, you could have invested in Desmond Ritter because Jeff has invested heavily in Desmond Ritter or heavily to me, probably not to him. I don't know. This was pulled in a break. Masataka Yoshida, one of one MLB debut patch card. I love these. There's uh, just, this was in a Breakers Delight box. Just a great, great innovation by Topps Fanatics. These debut patches. Love it. Sports Collectors Digest tweeted When Kobe Bryant won his first NBA title, he gave his championship ring to his father, and the ring is now up for bid at Golden. That was very nice of Kobe, except Chase Jordan says, here's here's the write-up on the, the ring. Uh, he gifted his father, um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Kobe ordered an extra copy of the majestic ring he was issued to give to his father. This is not an executive version of the championship ring, but the same exact ring given to Kobe and other Lakers players. So... At least Golden is honest about it in there. I think Sports Collector's Digest just got the details a little bit wrong. This is a really good point. Dave Merrick tweets out that, why do we have shutouts still on cards? We've added things like War and Whip. Why are shutouts still listed as a stat when shutouts are insanely rare nowadays? Why not put some other more advanced statistic like batting average on balls in play something more meaningful i think it's a good point uh wow well, what happened i had a an oh hey, here we go detective comics this is the uh first appearance of batman this one sold for 1.7 million dollars two years ago it's now with two and a half days remaining at $920,000. I'm just interested in these like really iconic high-end comic books. Even though I don't collect comic books, it's really interesting. I'll provide an update in my newsletter or maybe next week during this video. <laughs> 1960, Game Worn, Roberto Clemente, Championship Year, Jersey sold for over a quarter of a million dollars this is a piece of history it's awesome the interesting thing here is that this was graded by sgc and and i'm sure i'm like the only one who isn't aware of this but apparently sgc grades game worn apparel memorabilia and they provide an entire book about the about the uh grading which is wild to me. 
And this one was graded a uh, excellent from Dave, the second highest grade with super being the highest, super Dave. Huh, great, uh, great character. So I, I wasn't aware. Did you know that SGC grades game used memorabilia and provides a cool book along with it? I didn't know that. And here's where I lose some people, probably. I almost did a video on this, the fact that shopgoodwill.com had a 1977 Topps Star Wars cards box that they sold. I almost did a video on this, and then I don't know anything about Star Wars and decided I didn't want to because I just, <laughs> I'd probably make a fool of myself. I saw the first the original Star Wars once, and I didn't like it. I think it's one of those things where you have to grow up on Star Wars, and I didn't. I watched it when I was an adult, and I was like, what is this? <laughs> but I think you had to have grown up on it in the 80s to have appreciated Star Wars. And I never watched another Star Wars anything since then. So, I don't know. Sorry. Oh, and it sold for 1800 bucks. Uh, Judge halted. And remember, I did this months ago. Adrian Peterson, somebody was selling Adrian Peterson items in a, at an auction, and he freaked out about it, saying that they were his and they had no right to sell it. Well, apparently, Adrian Peterson is in significant debt. He has a judgment against him for, for $8.3 million for a loan he took out. Now, this judge did halt the auction against him for now, but this kind of opens up some, some more information about why those items were being sold in the first place. This says they were put up for auction February 9th, 15th through 29th. It feels like so much longer ago than that. Was that only a month ago? I don't know. Sad. These guys who make so much money in their careers and end up broke and selling off their stuff. Ah, uh, this is awesome. Type one photo. Why did that just happen? Of the mantle rookie, Bowman rookie. I want to just be able to click on click on the item. Here it is. Okay. This you may recognize from his 1951 Bowman card. Mantle's rookie. This is a type one photo, the original photograph, authentic by PSA, current bid, $140,000, and it has 21 days left. Just awesome. Another piece of card history. I love these type one photos that uh, tie back to a, an original iconic card. And Hobby News Daily actually has a lengthy write up about this and the finding of it and it's it's really good. I can't recommend that article enough. Speaking of Hobby News Daily, Courtney Reckline, I've never talked to her, never met her before. I don't know who she is. She's just such a good writer. And she wrote this article for Hobby News Daily about the intersection of hobbies, habits, and addiction, the complexities of card collecting and gambling. Strong recommend. Uh, I read anything she writes. She's just just really good. And uh, yeah, that's it for today, guys. I appreciate you all watching. Let me know in comments any thoughts you have. And I have some, some more interesting stuff I'm working on for this week. Hope you guys have a great Sunday.